I guess I'm in a little bit of a challenge uh, because I have like three different routes that I wanted to take with my personal statement. Um, so I guess uh, maybe like if you just go over maybe the three different ones that I'm doing and just have feedback on um, what you think of them. Um, but you, if you think I could maybe, maybe there's something in one or something in another that I could tie together. So I guess your general thoughts, I guess, on whatever I have so far would be, would be um, helpful, I think. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Shoot. Okay. So, um, basically the first, uh, the first one that I was doing, um, is basically just about how, when I was, uh, it's basically about language. And um, I tie in like how when I was younger and I went to like my home country, I didn't know um, the language. And so um, after coming, after that experience of not knowing the language, I basically didn't have a very good memory of the trip because I couldn't talk with a lot of my relatives. So um, that motivated me to try to learn my language again. And so then the second time I went, I actually, that world like existed for me. Like the way I write in the essay is like, this world now exists for me because I know it's language. Um, and so from there I wanted to, because I'm like a, um, a woman studies major and I'm really passionate about it. So I basically likened that language to like the language of social science and like understanding like racism and sexism and all those things and how um, if you don't know that language, then that world doesn't exist to you. So that was basically the essay that I said that I realized from that experience that um, language is important because if you don't have the language for something, then that world where that language exists doesn't exist for you. So it's kind of like abstract, but that's the essence of what I was writing in the first one. Okay, great. That sounds really interesting, but I'll reserve judgment until I hear the other two. Okay, great. Um, and so that's the first essay. And then the second one, um, I did it on basically uh, how I, it's, it's kind of like the typical, like um, I noticed some kind of injustice happening. And so that's what emboldened me to think about it and start a career around it. Um, so basically it was just like, um, my parents had a struggling business as I was, when I was growing up. And so, um, even as I was younger, I could pretty much tell that even though like basically the business was like slow, but even then I could tell that there were other things binding my family to that business that from my understanding wasn't fair. Um, it was probably like something legal, something like that, like all this, the terms of them being tied to that business were very stringent. Um, so I feel like um, afterward, now that I'm older, I feel like if I was older, if I had um, knowledge or if I knew someone who had the knowledge, um, they could loosen that terms and make that time for my parents like less hard. Um, and uh, I basically go into detail about what, um, what happened. Um, and from there, I just say like, I also talk about how like I'm, uh, like my family is a family that doesn't have like, it's like a Muslim immigrant, um, lower end income family. Um, so it's like a family that I wrote that wouldn't necessarily have access to like legal help anyway. Um, and I also said that, oh, like who would be, who would think about how helping this type of family, um, you know, who is Muslim, who's already has like all these identities about them that disenfranchise them. Um, so that was something that I noticed as a, as like a child. And I basically just wrote that, um, this was like a uncontrolled, um, unexpected probability or on like it was, I wrote like an uncontrolled chaos or unexpected unpredictability. And I wrote that basically like with law, um, I want to be able to control that chaos and control that unpredictability. Um, and yeah, basically I wanted to um, be, become familiar with um, the ways in which I would um, prevent that from happening to anybody else. So I think it's kind of like in the air, but that's basically like the real life, um, situation that I was like turning to it for my essay. Right. Okay. So you've got two great potential essay topics here. Mm -hmm. So let's go on to the third one. Okay. And then lastly, the third one, um, it kind of reads like, I don't want to say just reads as a resume because I think it's really just talking about, um, my love for like, like writing in general. 
So, um, let me see, I'm trying to find exactly where it is. Okay, yeah, so um, I basically start the essay with like a description of like me being in like this pink haze. And this pink haze is basically like I'm on this, like my favorite magazine website and I'm applying to be a writer for them. And um, because, they're web because the magazine is like pink, like there's just so much pink everywhere that I'm kind of like, uh, as I'm trying to apply for it. So that's just a brief like description in the beginning. Um, and then I basically just said that with that first, those were my first, um, like I got accepted as a writer for that magazine. Um, I got two positions instead of just one. And um, I said that, oh, because those were my first independent um, journalistic writing things. Like this was something that it was the first time that I was doing on my own. Um, and from there, like I noticed that in my career in college, like um, from that point on is what, flourished into like a writing career. Like I started doing a lot more writing. Um, and so, yeah, so I basically said that from that moment, I started like my writing career would manifest into like social justice writing and feminism and womanism projects. And then I would do like legal research on like dreamers, like, um, and how they uh, have access to university resources and stuff like that. Um, so then that's just the first paragraph. And Secondly, I just talk about how I've always like loved writing and I kind of go into like, oh, like when I wasn't writing creatively, then I was writing for, um, I was speech writing like for a scholarship fund ceremony. Or when I wasn't doing that, then I was um, writing my dad's like biography for his real estate website. And then I ended up writing contracts for his real estate ventures, like whenever he needed a contract. So there was like a lot of writing in my life. Um, and then basically, from there, I just said that I realized that um, writing isn't like it's not the writing itself that makes me happy, but it's the goal. It's bridging the goal between bridging the like bridging the gap between the goal and like the goal seeker. Um, so basically, like I would help my dad to um, further his business, and that's why I wanted to write it, and that's what made it exciting to write. So it was always the goal in mind that motivated me and that made me happy about writing. Um, and then I was going to go into just like, uh, and that's what brought me to writing for these publications. These publications were like really tied into my college community. Like I wrote for my college magazine. I wrote for two college magazines. Um, and I was like the senior editor for those magazines. Um, so basically, yeah. So I basically just said that, um, I loved writing. Um, I do have these two positions that like sprung up my writing career. And I've always liked it because of the goals that were behind the writing. And I wanted to come to the conclusion, which is that the ultimate goal, like I came to the final like um, realization that I wanted my writing to have like a legal goal in mind, um, to have like whatever writing capability I have, like argumentative capability I have, to fulfill a goal that will actually bring about some kind of change. Nice, okay, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've got some three great topics here. I want mm -hmm. to point out something about the third one you said about the writing, because the writing is really interesting, especially my ears perked up when you were talking about writing contracts for your dad's real estate business, the, the mm -hmm. web the contracts and the website and the bio and all that, because that mm -hmm. obviously has a legal r relation there. But I also noticed that in your discussion of the writing, you were describing many, many different contexts in yeah. which you wrote. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that runs the risk of becoming a laundry list of things mm -hmm. on your resume, which we definitely want to avoid. On the LSAT, we want to focus on one specific, on, 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 excuse me, on the personal statement, we want to focus on one specific area mm -hmm. and go really deep on it. Mm -hmm. right. And so to me, the other two topics you mentioned are better topics because you can get really specific on something and then mm -hmm. tie it back to a larger story about yourself. And then of course, directly or indirectly, answering the question, why law school? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So trust that your resume will cover the details of your different writing positions. And maybe there's a way to work it in elsewhere. But to me, from what I heard, and you can go different directions on this, the first topic about language, to me, mm -hmm. that sounds like a great personal statement topic. Mm -hmm. And then the second topic, to me, sounds like a great focus for a diversity statement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you could even flip those if you wanted to, but to me, 
the personal statement topic about the language, that is very mm -hmm. individual to you. It's unique to you. And we're seeing everything through your eyes, through that lens. Mm -hmm. The diversity statement was a bit more focused on your parents, at least on the surface. Mm -hmm. So I want you to really make sure that you talk about how you saw things and how you were involved, not to make mm -hmm. it only about your parents. But given that it talks about your, a lot about your background and different identities, to me, that makes it a great topic for a diversity statement. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, um, thank you for that input. I guess like the only thing that I was wondering about the writing one is that I guess for that one, it's just an explanation of why I like why my resume looks the way it does. Um, so I guess that's why I was like, I guess I needed the personal thing of just writing why it looks the way it does. Um, and I guess the only thing that I'm wondering is, should I try to, because I'm, I don't know, I guess for a lot of law essays, um, for my one, like I did like legal things, but I think the bulk of my um, resume is a lot of um, writing related things. So that's why I'm just wondering where I would kind of bulk that up or where I would bring that up because like you said it's like a good thing to bring up um so I guess I'm trying to like mingle the like the storytelling part and like the good thing that you said about like the personal statement like the language one for example and try to bring in my writing experience like I guess I'm having a hard time balancing um story and like my skills if that makes sense well skills are something that you want to show rather than tell on your application. And so mm -hmm. you don't need to write an essay saying, these are all the different writing related things I did. And this explains, this ties them all together. Mm -hmm. It's all writing. You don't need to explain your resume. Everyone's resume is varied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a way to tie in like language and writing, of course. There could be some way to work those mm -hmm. together if you want to mention it in passing in your personal statement. But mm -hmm. I don't think it really requires any other mm -hmm. explanation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, I think that was my only thing, which is just, um, like you said, I had like, writing skills, like things that I did, like how you mentioned, um, like how you liked the fact that I wrote real estate contracts, and then like I wrote um, for my dad's bio and things like that. Um, I guess like if I wanted to go with the language one, um, I guess I just wanted to know how, if you had any idea of how I would integrate like those things into it, or like integrate like, um, cause I don't know if I can necessarily, I, one of my biggest challenges is my resume because I, I don't want to say I have too much, but I have, a, like I said, like I said, a lot of different things that I've done. Um, so putting it all in one resume is like hard for me. So that's why I just wanted to know if you had any suggestions on like bringing about those things that I've done into like maybe the language prompt or something. Yeah. I'm honestly not sure how we would work it in. That's something that, mm -hmm. You know, it requires a certain creative element and the specifics are obviously related to that. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll withhold an answer on that because I don't think there is one answer on it. Mm -hmm. You can think about it and keep it in mind as you explore fleshing out a full, more full rough draft on this topic. Mm -hmm. But if you don't find a way to relate it, that's okay. It will mm -hmm. still be in the resume. And mm -hmm. you can, of course, not include every single thing in your law school resume. If it's one page, a lot of things have to be let out, left out by necessity. And mm -hmm. everyone's in that position. Everyone's on an equal playing field there. And so it mm -hmm. requires making a lot of tough decisions and being very economical with your choices of words and what to leave mm -hmm. out. But I think whatever you end up with, it sounds like you've done a tremendous amount and you'll end up with a compelling application no matter what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. I think um, the only thing I need is to, um, like I've written down the, I guess for the most part, the language one is basically almost done. Like it's basically a draft already. Um, so I guess I just need someone to like read over it and um, talk about if it has the message clear before I, I guess I want someone to like look over the draft before I like make anything a big change for it. So that's, I think the next thing that I need to do. Yeah, definitely worth getting feedback on these. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, just kind of things, okay. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for um, your help and your feedback. Um, I, I think I just needed a little bit of direction, so I appreciate the time that you've given for that. My pleasure, Aisha. What would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Um, I think the biggest insight would be uh, the, I guess the uh, the fact that you said that skills like will kind of speak for themselves, um, and that you don't necessarily have to have them spelled out in your essay. 
um, and that more of like, I guess I realized that the story actually does matter a lot more in the um, personal statement um, because I guess my initial thing was that maybe the writing one would be better than the other two because they're more um, technical focused. Um, but it's interesting to hear that the ones where there's a story like um, actually works better as a personal statement. Great, fantastic. I'm glad I was able to help. Please keep in touch and let me know how everything goes as you move forward. Okay, yes, thank you so much. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care. Mm -hmm.